wish on my broken soul We keep walking down the road They killed our mothers, fathers send our sons We are light, we are the light of the world We come from the land of the rising sun Every single day we keep rising no matter what they do, we are never giving up This is my message to the world And prayers be out for us And prayers redemption We shall win in the end This is my message to the world And prayers are free
people great dear friends wherever you are on the face of this very planet once again this very glorious evening of the 21st day sunday the 21st day of june in the year of our most high elohim 2020 with the time now standing at exactly six minutes past 7 p.m in the blessed land of biafra I welcome each and every one of you, and as I do so, I will, or should I say, should encourage you to welcome all those who are around you, because this very live presentation is going out to you in every time zone on the surface of this very planet. If you are dedicated, if you are serious, if you want to extricate yourself from the pain and the suffering, if you want to escape the damnability of the zoological republic, you must be listening to us at this precise moment. If you are not, you are doing yourself a great disservice. Here we have come to preach the truth, unadulterated gospel of redemption. Some may not like it. As I said during my last broadcast of a precisely seven days ago on Sunday, I did say that it was Armageddon. After that very broadcast, that things will no longer be the same. And once again, we have been proven right, and things are not the same. All the workers of iniquity. All those who are blinded by what I call religious buffoonery, they have all been confounded. They are running from pillar to post. They are confused as I knew they would be confused. Because they cannot see in the spirit. They are blind. Things of the spirit are lost on them. But this very day we shall continue. As I said during my earlier post, if you know that those of you who are of, should I say, weak constitution are listening, then I will seriously encourage you to disengage because the program tonight, it may not be as hot as it was seven days ago, but I can assure you it won't make for palatable listening for a great majority of you. But we must proceed all the same. I will say good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night to some of you because the whole world is listening. The whole world is listening. Before I came here on air, I did get a confirmation from Facebook that they are seriously suppressing and interrupting, should I say, people visiting to my page. They are doing all they can to make our work impossible but they will always fail as they have failed previously. We are live on satellite. Those of you with strong decoder should be able to listen to us, which is what most of you are using in Abuja anyway. If you are in Biafra land, you will listen to us. If you are fortunate enough, via FM, 
one of our CHKs that is broadcasting in the land of Biafra. If you have a smart device, which most of you do have, you can listen to me by going to my page on Facebook, Mazen Namde Kano. I have nearly about, say, 300,000 likes, so you shouldn't be able to miss it. There are a few other ones set up by DSS to try to lure people away, to try to confuse people, but have failed. The same way that every enemy we encounter crumbles, that is how they ought to have crumbled. We are also on Radio Biafra app, and very soon we are also going to be on IPOB app as well. Right now we are on Radio Biafra app. You can get us via tuning. You can also go to get us via Sweet Radio. You can get us via... All these names I'm mentioning, just Google them. Log in. Just search for Radio Biafra. You'll be listening to my voice immediately. Some of us have decided to stream us live also on YouTube, which I understand is the means through which most of you are listening. And I will encourage you to also go to Garden Radio as well. In all these places, you will be able to hear us this evening live and direct. I say evening because of where I'm domiciled this evening, the same time as you have in the land of Biafra. My name is Nnamde Kano. I am the leader of IPOB, indigenous people of Biafra all over this planet. We are in over 100 countries and counting. We are the largest mass movement on the surface of this very earth, bar none. We are a juggernaut, unstoppable. There is nothing anybody can do, not now, not tomorrow, not ever. We are unstoppable. Our march is towards Biafra. To restore Biafra, nothing more, nothing less. And this very generation of IPOB will accomplish it. Do you want to know why we will accomplish it? Because we always put Chukukika Biyama first. God Almighty in heaven is number one. That is why we worship him and him alone. That is why we bow not down before any idol. And I never had a sin. I don't worship idol. And because of that, Elohim said, as long as you proclaim my name in every truth and every honesty, Biafra will come in your time. And because his words are yea and amen, anything he says must come to pass. That is why we have stuck on, stuck only onto this path of redemption. In truth and in every honesty. That heaven and earth may bear us witness that they came and they proclaimed the salvation of God Almighty in heaven. Their cries and their prayers were listened to. And they were set free. When I say that this is the last miracle on the face of this very earth, I meant it. And with everything that's happening around us, you now understand the enormity of the task that awaits us. What we must do to be free. That is why we are gathered this evening, morning, afternoon, night, depending on where you are. Because for those in Japan, I think it's about 3 or 4 a.m. in the morning. For those in Malaysia, Indonesia, I think maybe it's about 2 a.m. in the morning or thereabout. For those of you in Los Angeles, it is 10 a.m. in the morning of Sunday. That's how it is, because the world keeps rotating all the time. When it is your morning and your time zone, it could be somebody's tea time, it could be somebody's breakfast, it could be somebody else's dinner, somewhere. That's how the world rolls. It waits for no one. When they say time waits for no one is because regardless of what happens, the earth will keep rotating around the sun. It will never stop. Every blessed day the earth is rotating at over 1,000 miles per hour. But you don't feel it. Because the grace and the miracle of creation is with us. Elohim is with us, and we must worship him. This very evening, as we have always done. But I am going to pray a slightly different prayer in the language of heaven. Igbo language is the language of heaven, the oldest language on the face of the earth by none. Everything I say, I have proof. I don't say something that I don't know. Everything I say, there is proof. And I'm also going to prove it to all of you tonight should you dare or challenge me to do so. 
and I am going to pray. I wouldn't call it a prayer. It is a prayer, of course, because we are requesting something from heaven. We are going to pray a prayer of the Ten Commandments. And do you know why we pray this prayer? Because even those that founded the USA, United States of America, if you go to some areas in the USA, you will see a tablet proclaiming the Ten Commandments. And why is it very important that we pray this evening alluding to the Ten Commandments? Because that will be the very basic foundation upon which Biafra will rest. I repeat, the Ten Commandments of God that nobody disputes, not even Islam, everybody believes in it. That is the pillar upon which we are going to rest this new Biafra. That is my promise to God in heaven. And this evening I will affirm it. Biafra will be a godly nation. Secular, yes. Because you can practice whatever you want to practice, but it must be anchored on God. We don't answer Mwachuku for nothing. We don't call ourselves Umuchileke for nothing. It is for a purpose, a divine purpose. That purpose is that Biafra will come in our time. And the pillars that will hold Biafra is the mercy of God Almighty in heaven. Unashamedly, I proclaim, because I know the whole world is listening. They want to know the type of Biafra we're going to build. And I'm telling them this very day that Biafra will be a godly nation anchored on the core values and principles surrounding the Ten Commandments that was given to Moshe on Mount Sinai. Unashamedly so, I say. And please, if you bow down your heads, wherever you are, we are going to pray. Our enemies are not resting. We don't expect them to rest. But we must continue to preach this very gospel. The gospel of truth, of redemption, and of honesty. This very gospel of freedom. Only can in an old banana can no banana nachi. Only a brandy whose way for a hazu. Oh, no banana be a canna chani man from the other watching keta. Oh, my gabba corona one in the negant on your mum. Can you wear zia hozi? Kizran in a more can you wear bassa? Is Anya to the Guanya Sulangon, Guanya Lagazo? I have to look at my brother. Me, he is so quick at the my room with you. No, Captain Money, and you go no way, Ganis in Jerebe. My local army, no way, Ganam Mason and Cabra and Gossin. And you went up with Salani when I jam my way, bully you, Luna singing women, the Kalichina can not go. We went up Okuno, one in Nasan Eden, so Neden, so Chinakan. And you went up very good, very new guru cheer. Of one name, I know, but to an obeying of any man, as yanny. When I got a marine, a better game, my marine, or me coy, a boom of yon or one in a boom of a bundle biafra. Give a battalion of saying, Maka was up time, and I can't join him. Give what I can in case you may work for getting more IP of your hand on a low one and kept red and gossip. Where goes your walk and where goes your home and is no one. To my own den, I name. Everybody get up a chin, chitan den, I don't know, machine can make you a big conno. Bahume, ye han kasyubi, ye kwahi kikere, ye ham monk is yopu, ye hezi monk and water, koga bohan wears yopu in my cabaret, can we not bat here? Nani we na poke we na dogen na inki we na asen nani ye kubuta ko wani ne we ye no no na biafra na bia di kisi we kwa ni nangu ayi na poke we na asen ige ni 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 ma fa ni ni mian ige ni ni biafra ni ma fa twenty twenty ni ni mian ni mo na chine ken ni 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 jira obere kosi kusu malaya ni biafra bo ni ni inke ni inke ni ni mo madu dento ani ge we re ya na inki we we re ya fair off for no so police. Yeah, <laughs> 
Uzoni ne di ti te kanyi si wene e bulia han soye lu si tena han kanyi na aza. Ani wene e pwagin kwan na kebre de ngozi. Ni ho wani ne bundi ne ganyi nti. Nani ge wore bi afran na nki we we buzo ya. Ne li wili nki nina na kebre de ngozi. Ni ye na uwe mbumu e bundi sa na napabu ne bodi jitu. Iwe zi yo zi. We si na obo nane ge bu china ken na kusuri na kendi aga. Na hanti di a tu abo moge, haga e wet chosa wet ni nagi, haga abu isela wet ni a arosu abu mufe yo fufe. Ni ina dion wo i buti ne ken na dengosi, i chon wo nyo abu lage ni aga makani ihu. Ine wota tama huni sini ni ne, wo abu hanka tona na rubunde koro gasi. Mane hona ngi na digi dem, ni sini ne huo huo puniri, bundi di a tu a, buesin lo ne hona mane debi wugi. Isani tibo la hanso ya makaja. Dihi na jomo yi bonye wanyi na chine ke na dengozi. Ne kaka baga laka hana bundi jahe we na leya ni yi. Yi sangi te tupa chasa ni mi zo kamad hoi anso. Na bale ans isi. Kamada dendu mwoge jiwe yonwa na bala. Sa bojiz miko bojiz wopita ni yi. No bojiz di eto mwonyo la ni mani ke gano no. Blada nyo wanyi ne zono la ni mwa. Bundi wopi hai bundi pili tita ni yi na bali si. Ka jomo yi bonye wanyi jiwe meli wene lowa. Ni mo koso miyen kanani ma bale nkasa yi wezu yi ke. Ogo yi amri jiwe gozi wopa chasa ni mi zo kamad hoi anso. Isa ni kwenye nani 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 ukanu hani wadogo kwenye nalansu kanki kura nani 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 Isa ni kule mana nani kwenye kanye silo sanya bula mwere wade madi banyi Eze kura nani zono woko oso Mwabu mwe masebe mwenye na mwe bako nabaya nana nkade ngoza Kabi uli lezi chine nana nanki igwe Nko mwe kopta anu wani niji uwe me Kandide nduwe ke Nomu nani yibu chile kena bonya nini efe Wene duwa nini uzija Kama lagi ne brege wezio ke ni mendo wanya. Kanyo wanya bonde dendu we bulia hanso. Yali jwage mama to yi. Sene bige marone bige. Ise. 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 Mama de regi chineka. We now proceed. To unveil the truth this very day. That the world may know. Because the zoo is crumbling. It has crumbled already. What happened in Ghana yesterday is just confirmation. Because this very year, the zoo will be decimated beyond human comprehension or recognition. Never again will the zoo exist. It's gone. We have not done anything. We have not commenced our march. We have not confronted the Janjaweed terrorists who are in our forest and in our farms. We have not gone out to meet those who are killing us. Yet the zoo is unraveling before our eyes. As always, I will endeavor to wrap every of our discussion this evening around a very common theme. And that theme is that if out of, should I say, a habit of treachery or a lifetime of betrayal, you fail to recognize the importance of the time that we are living in, then may the good Lord have mercy upon you. I need you to understand this very clearly. Because as I say always, we are a highly religious, I say godly people, let me put it that way. Some have turned it into modern day religiosity. What I want to make you understand this very evening is this. That every problem afflicting us as a people, as a race, is our own making. Every difficulty that we Bia friends are undergoing right now is our own making. And we trace it back to one common, or should I say, a simple denominator. And that denominator is slavery. Kidnapping in modern parlance and slavery which the whole world is now running around trying to atone for. Before we came on air, we understand that the Church of England, of all places, Anglican Church, was involved in slavery. I will tell you the truth. And quite frankly, I don't give a damn if you like it. If you don't like it, go and do your research. Also, the Bank of England said they are apologizing for their role in slavery. And I want to tell you why we are in this mess we are in today. 
those of you who are very close to your scriptures, those of you that have the Bible or even the Quran with you, I want you to go to the book of Exodus chapter 21 verse 16. Exodus 21 16 that is the genesis of our problem as a race. This suffering we are suffering today, if you go back to the Holy Book, if you go back to Bible, it is there. That was the beginning of our problem. Everything afflicting black people in America, every pain, every shame, every dishonor, you can trace it back to this in the book of Exodus. 21 16 and before we proceed any further you will also understand that every time we say we are we are in the land of egypt that the zoo called nigeria is the land of egypt and i encourage you if they kick you out of my page we are on youtube you can go to radio biafra page as well because I know they will do the best they can to suppress us. <laughs> That's what they will do. But the world is listening. After this program, by the end of this program, nearly 2 million people would have listened to it live. 2 million will listen to it live. So that is why we are not bothered. That is why we are not concerned. That is why we will continue to do everything humanly possible to preach this very gospel of redemption. Exodus 21 verse 16. I want to let the whole world understand. I want to let the whole world know where our problems started from. That they may know the truth. And that truth will set them free. Once you commit this crime, once you commit this very crime, you must be punished. Your race will be punished. God will never ever forgive you until you are punished. I want to let the whole world understand that those of us who are the children of light, those of us that supply the bulk of slaves to South America, the Caribbean, and North America, the entire West Africa was more or less emptied. The most prized slaves are those that came from Biafaland. Go and check the books. You will see it and you will know. Do you know what the Bible says in Exodus 21, 16? <laughs> very, very frightening about kidnapping your people and selling them. It says that he who kidnaps a man, whether he sells him as a slave, remember? Those who are, who are bragging that they are slave traders. They are slave dealers. I want to let you understand the reason why Niger Delta is in darkness this evening. More than any other place Nigeria is darkness itself. Then inside that darkness, there is a place that some people ignorantly refer to as Niger Delta. I want you to know the reason why they are even suffering more than every other person in this zoo called Nigeria. It is in the Bible. As I told you before, Elohim gives us message to give to the living and it is my duty and solemn responsibility to pass that on. Listen carefully. He who kidnaps a man, whether he sells him as a slave or you keep the, that very person, a fellow human being, your brother or your sister, you will surely be put to death. If nobody can kill you, God in heaven will kill you because those are his words. He that stealeth a man or selleth him or is found in his hands, he will surely be put to death. We cannot put ourselves to death because we sold our own people first to the Arabs and then to Europeans. That is why God is today dealing with us. When they kill somebody, you campaign and you say black lives matter or black lives matter. What you're saying is that I have sinned against God in heaven because we sold our own people as slaves. And why is Niger Delta suffering more than any other place? There is no, I posted something last night. There is no tangible, meaningful development. It's because go and check 
in the coastal, I wouldn't call it Nigeria, that, that's not the name. The name is the coastal region of Biafra land. Go to the coastal region of Biafra land and see for yourselves. The reason, the people suffering most from the coastal region of Biafra land were the hotbeds of slave trade. Something that God in heaven is against. Not just there. I want you to also go to the book of Deuteronomy 24-7. To the book of Deuteronomy 24-7. If you go there, you will see what is happening. If you go there, you will understand what is happening. And the reason why you shouldn't be kidnapping people. Because once you do that, once you kidnap somebody, you are bringing a curse not just upon yourself and your family, you are bringing a curse on your generation as well. That is why it is absolutely critical that in the next coming weeks and months, when we come to confront the enemies who are within, the Janja we that have come from all over the Sahel to take over our land, that we understand this. It is a cardinal rule. It is a cardinal principle that can never, ever, ever be breached. Because black people sold their own kind. That is why the world is treating them like the animals that some, some of them are. That is why the world is treating them like the animals that some of them are. If you go back to the book of Genesis, I am sorry to dwell on this, but it is very, very critical you understand it. If you go back to the book of Genesis, why did the Israelites suffer in Egypt? Was because the house of Jacob, they sold their brother Joseph. The same thing that God himself was against was what they did. They sold him to the Ishmaelite merchants. The same thing that we did in the land of Biafra. The same thing that we did selling our own people, our own kind, first to Arabs and then to Europeans. And you expect God to love you. It is impossible. You must pay for it. And that is that punishment is what we are in right now. That was why Elohim in his infinite mercy and kindness decided to isn't it very funny that the same people that we sold our people to, they come back, they conquered us. And they gave us their religion. Very, very sad indeed. Do you see how the punishment goes? The same thing that happened to the temple in Israel. When they started to worship idol, God went and brought all those nations that they were worshipping their idols to come and conquer Israel one after the other. And sack them. And on the pain of death, threatened never ever to worship God in truth and honesty anymore until they spent over 2,000 years in exile. Millions dead before they cried and God heard their cry and decided to deliver them in 1948. This is where you're looking at only came into existence again in 1948. Since the time of Christ. Only 1948. Less than a hundred years ago. The Israel I've been hearing about never existed for two, over 2,000 years. It only came to existence only in 1948, less than a hundred years ago. And that is the understanding I want all of you to have as we delve into the main substance of our gospel this very evening. Have you ever asked yourself why is it that people who you are more educated than more enlightened than are controlling you? Have you asked yourself that question? Why is it that some of you, why is it that some of you never pause to even think nor ponder the absurdity that people that drive cattle from place to place, they are not very fluid in their own language, they cannot communicate very well in the lingua franca, which is English language, but they are in control of your lives. Have you ever wondered why? Do you know why the British gave power over to the Janjaweed, to the Caliphate? All are in the design of God in heaven to punish you for the things that you have done. 
But now that we have atoned consistently for nearly seven years, you are about to witness the might and the glory of God this very year upon the lives of his children. That when Biafra comes, you will know to worship God forever and ever. This year. You just watch and see. Because in the zoo, the account of Mark is out. I want to start with this. The account of Mark is out. And can you believe that in Abia, you need to score 130 if you're a male, 130 if you're a female, to qualify to go to a unity school, which is a federal government secondary school. Now, in Abia, this is one Nigeria for you. What is paining me is not that the Janjaweeds are doing this and the Yoruba are supporting them. What is actually getting me angry is that our people, after seeing this, this level of entrenched injustice, year in, year out, month in, month out, somebody will still have the temerity to, to, to stand up and say, we want a restructured Nigeria, we want to be in Nigeria. I want you to understand the level of Oh my goodness, idiocy in the brains of these people that open their mouth to talk about one Nigeria. And we are all going to ask them a question this evening. Can you tell me the reason why Abia State, the reason why Enugu State is 134? Why Imo State is 138? Why is it that Inoshun State is 127? Inondo State is 126? Inogun is 131? We are ass. We are ass in Taraba. In Yobe, you only need to score three or two. You went into an exam hall with your fellow countryman or countrywoman and you wrote the same exam. And you came out and the, the examiners are telling you that if you come from Yobe State, if you come from Zamfa, if you come from Taraba, if you from, come from Sokoto, the only thing you need to score is nine. nine to be considered as somebody who have now passed that very exams. And for their females, it's slightly higher. Because in Sokoto, apparently, the women go to school more than the men. Only 13. If you score 13, you qualify. After going to unity school, having scored only two marks. Two marks means in your state, once you go into the examination hall, you write your name. Uh, 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 you come out, you have passed. Whereas in other places, in Ogun State, in Kwara State, for instance, in Enugu, in Ebonyi, in Delta, you must go over 110 to be considered. So somebody walks into an examination hall and writes his, his or her name from Yobe. They come out and they are now qualified to go to unity school. And you are in one Nigeria. Now my concern is this. Are you telling me that your pastors are not saying this? Are you telling me that those that claim they are part of um, uh, this um, Let's Keep Nigeria one, are they not seeing this injustice? Those that came out to protest for Black Lives Matter, don't they see this? Those that claim they have NGOs and fighting for equality, don't they see this? I'm asking, don't the British High Commissioner see this? Don't the US Ambassador understand what is going on? Are you telling me that the German Ambassador is unaware of what is happening? Are you telling me that all the missions of every civilized nation to the zoo called Nigeria, are you telling me that they're not aware of this very broad daylight, blatant discrimination? Now I'm asking you, those that want us to be part of One Nigeria, on what basis, therefore, are you asking me to be part of One Nigeria? On what basis? This is why a lot of our men spend their time gossiping. They don't attack the issues that matter. I want to ask every senator, every House of Reps member, in which country of this world do you have not just the but triple standard, one standard for Yobe, for, for Taraba, for Sokoto, for Zamfara, for, for, for Abuja, uh, for, for, for Katsina, for, for Kanu, for Kaduna, for Jigawa, and a different one for those in Imo, Abia, Cross River, Okun, Oshun. 
I, get, I ask you, therefore, based on what is happening, these are our children, those going to secondary schools. These are little children, the ages of 10 and 11. So, from that very age, you are telling them that they do not matter. That they have to aspire. Not to be excellent, but to be mediocre. Because if there is no incentive, if somebody who scores only two marks from UB can go to Unity School, then what is the incentive for starting to score over 130? Or 134, as the case may be, for Enugu and Dimo. Just explain that to me. But you have senators. You have lawmakers. You have those championing one Nigeria, saying Nigeria used to be great, it would be great again. How can it be great? How can you subscribe to be in a society where somebody from somewhere, because they are Janjaweed, they don't go to school, they sniff glue from morning till night, they move cattle from place to place, they only score to, they, all they need to remember when they go to the exam hall is their name, and they have passed. Is that very fair? Is that how to run any country? And why are those who should be speaking out not speaking out? There are a rented mob of, should I say, unemployed and and should I, slightly educated fools in Abuja. You know what I always write and petition. If you see their shirt, they always have blue pen, red pen, and black pen. They you know that plastic beak. They line it up. That's their petition writers. That's what they do. Hawking. Should I say they are ERAT services to anybody who is willing to pay them top money? Do you see what they have done to you? Your own children have to score higher than them, but they, are, they want to be president. So you're telling me that somebody who is half educated, who can barely mention his name, is worthy to be president after president after president of a damnable contraption without those who are educated from the south just sit on the sidelines and just watch and you're telling me that everything is right about this nigeria i want to ask the british high commissioner because they were the ones that brought us in this mess are you telling me you're not aware of this that is why we are going to write to each and every one of them to remind them at least to inform them that they are in a place where this the, if this were to happen in the USA, the riots will not end. Were this to happen in the UK, the riots will never end. Were this to happen anywhere in Europe, you will have all commentators, all columnists writing and talking about it from morning till night. Why are you not doing something in this zoo called Nigeria? Why not, I ask you. These are the things you need to ponder. These are the things that you need to consider because it's very, very upsetting. Very, very upsetting. And that is why the zoo must fall. That is why the zoo must fall. People prefer to live on lies and deception. You know what is happening every blessed day. There is something I'm going to play for each and every one of you to listen to tonight. What is happening inside the zoo? You know these things very well. Your bishops, they know. Your pastors, they know. Your reverend fathers, they know. Everybody is aware. Your politicians, they know. Your so-called elders, they know. But they have all kept quiet. Why is it difficult for an average Nigerian to confront evil and say that something is bad? All they care about is tight and offering, tight and offering. Every blessed week, tight and offering. Impunity is happening. They never come to the congregation and they say to them, Oh, my children, how come? You scored over 100. You cannot go to unity school. But somebody who only scored two in Yobe is going to unity school. Free education. And I ask these pastors, do you at all look at your congregation and ask them these questions? Are you, put, are you telling me that as a, a so-called elder, a senator, a house of reps, house of assembly, local government chairman, a council, are you not aware of this entrenched injustice? And I'm asking every Nigerian, tell me where else in the world such travesty will be allowed to stand. Show me where. You can't, can you? But you want me to be part of one Nigeria? This is why it will never work. Because all of you are hypocrites. You are all hypocrites. 
Now listen. The injustice did not stop there. Everybody is there now watching as violent Islam, jihad is coming. Sweeping and killing people every blessed day. Cutting up our parts and throwing it all over the place. There was no outrage. There was no shock. Because a Biafran woman was killed. Her leg, her right leg cut off. Her left leg cut off. Her torso cut off. Her head cut off. Her neck severed. Her hands cut off. I don't see anybody complaining in America. I don't see anybody complaining in Britain. I don't see any uh, uh, diplomatic frenzy. That woman belongs to somebody. Has a father and a mother. Maybe children. Who knows? Nobody cares. Nobody wants to know. And after seeing all of that, somebody is telling me about one Nigeria. That is where I begin to, that is why I get upset with most of them. That is why I insult them. That means you are very cold, you are callous, you are evil. You want me to belong to a country where somebody can wake up one morning and decide to kill me for no reason. And that person will just go scot-free. In most instances, he or she will get paid for doing it. Because they are following me. And that is the country you want me to belong to. Let us hear them to show you how evil the zoo is. Listen, please. Hey. Listen. Mr. Sega, I you, Bishop. Can you hear me? Yeah, listen. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, so, look, the call by the governor. That's Ganduja. The government stopped the influx of herdsmen from outside the country. Now, remember this... A governor is calling for a stop to the influx of headsmen and I've said this thing repeatedly can anybody then tell me why the southern borders are closed you have politicians in the south so that is to tell you that every politician you have in the southern part of the zoo called Nigeria is in the pockets of the Fulanis in the north and that is punishment from God because as we are selling slaves so we are the Yoruba the, 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 the names actually do the war will come to that later not, your, not um, Yoruba the Dudu was also selling their own slaves. Those in Dahomey were selling theirs too. In Badagri. Big time. Selling slaves big time. That is why you see how God punish people who go against him. Slavery is evil. Before other people around the world begin to atone for their role in slavery, Africans must first apologize to black Americans for selling them as slaves. We sold our people. A white man did not just wake up one morning and come and start grabbing us. No, we were the ones selling, and this is the result of it. The same thing is continuing today. The same promise is continuing today. Those of them in the northern part of the zoo, the Fulani Caliphate, they opened their borders from Sokoto to to to, to Medugri. Anybody can come in into Nigeria. Go to Benue, go to Agatu, take land, rape their women, and kill them. Our army is there. Put will protect you. Elufa will protect you. In the south of Nigeria, you want me to belong to? But in the south, the borders are closed. And you're telling me that your so-called southern elders, are protected, that they are normal? You want me to respect them? They are there and this level of impunity is going on. And they kept quiet. And you want because of one Nigeria. Do you see how foolish you are? Those of you idiots from the south claiming that you want to be part of one Nigeria. How full, how, when will you develop brain and be able to reason? Why did they close your borders in the south? But open the ones in the north. Why? You don't ask questions. You don't in your life ask any questions. Nothing whatsoever. Because your brains are empty. All you care about is um, allocation. Oh, we had to steal money. Or oh, which politicians to carry back for? After four years, who knows? You might start from TC, transition chairman of local government, and from there you can make your own money as well. You move your families abroad. You buy a, a fancy mansion in the USA, and you'll be traveling and coming back. And that's it. That's your one Nigeria. That is your lot in life. Because you're a southern politician. You have been programmed to destroy your own people. Especially in Biafra land, our own politicians by the lights of um, of um, Abariba. 
all the rest designed to destroy your own race. That's all you do. Destroy your own people. Hear them from the north. Hear them very well. Hear them. The position has happened before as Listen. to what to do with that movement within the country. So it's one thing to stop influx from another country. Does this, should this be extended to movements within the country? And if that happens, what happens to when they say, look, we've got right to move around? Those with the right to move around are the cattle headers, the Fulani. You are telling me anywhere in the world are people normal? People are rioting all over the world because of the death of one black man in America. One black man was killed and the whole place is going up in flames. Do you know that uh, a Biafran, an Igbo woman was killed, her body parts cut into pieces and scattered in a farm? Not one single protest. All those writing their long, long, useless grammar. I was waiting for them. Not one single protest. I said, not one. That is the, to show you how, how uh, subdued we have become as a people. Now, you're telling me in a country where you claim that foreigners are coming to kill you in your own land, and it is being discussed as if it is a, a, a they've just gone to a party somewhere. Just so flippantly. Oh, if you cross the borders in the north, how about those moving that say they have a, people are discussing the death of fellow human beings as if it is just nothing. As if they've just squashed a tiny mosquito somewhere in their room. Can you believe that? These are the things that when I think about it and a black man, I begin to go crazy. I don't, I, I don't understand these people. You'll be shocked. Listen. Yeah, the call, like I said, the call by the governor to stop the influx of the hatsmen across into Nigeria is a very excellent uh, call, but it should go further than that. And I don't know whether uh, that call, uh, whether the government is together, whether the state governors are in, uh, in, in tune with the presidency or each one of them is doing what he's doing in his own state. But one thing I know is that I have already said it here, that there are hundreds of thousands of these killer hatsmen, which the governor has confirmed that they are, they, when they come in, they are heavily armed. And in the country. This is a proof that you have no president, you have no vice, you have no body in power. I don't know how else to explain it to black people so they will understand it. That was why the Zoo High Commission, their embassy in Ghana, was demolished. The Ghanaians know you have no president. How can you demolish? Do you know what the meaning of an embassy? Sorry to digress a little bit from what they are discussing. That is, headsmen are coming in and killing you. The likes of El Rufai are arming and providing, should I say, political and military cover for these killers to come in to take over our land, to make the geopolitical space, the Nigeria that you have right now, the home of Fulanese across the Sahel. That is their game plan. You know it and I know it. Now the question is, what are you doing about it? We know what we are doing. All of you talking about one Nigeria. I want to ask you, is it in the education system? Is it in the, which aspect of life is salvageable in Nigeria? I said, which aspect is salvageable? Which aspect is salvageable? There's none. The killers are coming into your country. And this man that is being interviewed by channels is saying, presidency. Where is that hard man in Buhari? You say, oh, he's insurgency. Insurgency will come. He's a hard man. He's a general. Where is he? Have you seen how cleverly Channels no longer talks about Buhari? Oh, where is the president? He's not presidency. Now, after all these pointers, what again is stopping you people from understanding that you have no president? Do you know the meaning of an embassy? An embassy is, is a foreign land let me put it this way. Let me not uh, use an abstract explanation. Anytime you go to the U.S. Embassy or their con in Abuja or their consulate in Lagos, once you walk into that premises, you are on U.S. soil. Nigerian government cannot come there to look for you. Remember Chile when Assange ran into Chilean Embassy in London. 
Did Metropolitan Police go there to arrest him? No. Did Danny go there? No. Because that piece of territory is Chile. You can't go in there. International diplomatic protocol. Now, for once you invade an embassy, it is tantamount to the violation of that country's sovereignty. That is how important it is. For the embassy not to be invaded or no, it was demolished. The Zoo High Commission in Accra was demolished. You have not heard anything from the president of a country whose land was invaded. What does that tell you? Do you see why I am angry with all these fake pastors that are fixated on tithes and offering? Do you see the reason why? Tell me why a country, if you doubt me, go and invade the U.S. Embassy in Abuja. Trump, as, as you are invading, the President of America will be talking immediately. Go and try it anywhere in the world. But you're telling me that the embassy, let me call it an embassy, the embassy of Nigeria was demolished in Accra. The president did not say anything because there is no president. Absolutely none. None whatsoever. Headsmen are coming in, they're killing. Do you now understand my anger against these people? This is what I'm talking about, the brain of a black man, inability to discern, to reason, to think. People don't even know about what an embassy is. They don't know the, the sanctity of an embassy. They don't understand it. You think it's just where you go and get visa and you travel? Or where you go and get your passport renewed? Do you even know of an embassy? That piece of embassy in... Who are, the, who are these people for goodness sake? Who are they? What sort of human beings are this? They never listen, they don't think, they don't reason. These are the people in the zoo we are talking about. And that is why we must leave the zoo as imminently as possible. Because some of our people, they don't reason anymore. They reason like a ginger weed. Why they are calling, I have no idea. Why they are calling, I have no idea. But they will call anyway. They will call. That is who they are. That is the way they reason. Very, very sad indeed. Very, very sad indeed. As I was saying before, I was rudely interrupted by that caller who is not paying attention. They are not listening. Because if he's listening, why would he be calling when the lines are not open yet? Why would they be calling? Do you see the reason why blacks are in a mess? Do you now understand it? Why we are in a mess? Do you see the reason why the foreigners can do whatever they can and get away? Because every ambassador in the zoo has been bribed. UK. U.S., Germany, all they are there for is how much they can loot as your politicians are looting, so are they looting as well. Since you want to destroy yourselves, we will help you destroy yourselves. That's what they're doing. Do you now understand it? Do you understand it now? The mess that people are in. The building block for every society, so to speak, is fairness, equity and fairness. What is the fairness in having different cut of marks? Not just maybe 10 or 15 or 20. I have to get one 34 from Imo State to go to school. But somebody that is a ginger weed from the north will need to score two. And when you have them as president, as a um, uh, 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 finance minister, as the head of strategy and planning in the Ministry of Finance, as the head of budget, you want your country to move forward, to be like Singapore, to be maybe like India, to be growing. Are you not insane? Because from their education, you shall know them. I have said it before and I continue to say it, that the reason why we are so messed up the way we are is because we are in darkness. Born, some of you born into darkness. I was born a Biafran. Some of you are born into darkness. So you don't know any better. And we are the light of the world. I say it because every Abrahamic faith that you have, the three great religions of the world, which is Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, everybody alludes to the fact that God is light. I said everybody. From the Old Testament to the New to the Quran. Everybody acknowledges that God is light. 
and you come from a place called darkness and you want your lives to be better. How can it be better? In the book of Isaiah 60, 19 to 20, it says it's there very clearly that Elohim will be your everlasting light and your days of sorrow will come to an end. We know what we are doing. Sometimes, you, if you don't understand it, just say you don't understand. Is it the book of Psalms, Psalm 97, 11, that the light shines on the righteous and joy on the upright in heart. Everything is about light. Everything is about light. It is everywhere. All the way to the book of John 1, 15. Is it Ecclesiastes 11, 7? Everywhere is replete with what light represents. That light shines in darkness. And darkness can never overcome it. We are the light. We, dear friends, we are the light. And as the name implies in Nigeria, which means a darkened black territory can never ever prevail over us. Do you see where we anchor our agitation on the promise of God? When I say we are anchoring our agitation on the promise of God, people don't understand it. They think we are being too religious now. I, I went to, I studied both the Old Testament that underpins um, of Judaism, New Testament that underpins Christianity. I even went to Quran. Do you know I'm studying Quran? And I found the same thing. And I wish I can tell it to you. The place we found in the Quran is Surah An-Nur. 24th of fact, Surah S-U-R-A-H and A-N No, I'm, I'm not sure I'm pronouncing it correctly. Do you know what it says there? That Allah is the light of the heavens and the earth. That God is light. Do you see what we call ourselves in Muchin again? Even in Islam, they know who we are. That we are the children of light. Do you understand it? Because this Surah and No 24 to 35 says, God, I'm now quoting Quran for you so you understand it. Because we are scholars, we read. I'm quoting Quran for you so you know. God is the light of the heavens and the earth. The example of his light is like a niche. Where it is a lamp. The lamp is in a crystal. And the crystal shining as if it is like a pearl. Like a radiant star. Lit from the oil of a blessed olive tree that is neither of the east nor of the west. In here, Chineke. That little name you answer in here, people don't know the name of it. Light in here. That we answer in our villages, you have no idea. I'm telling you that every major religion in the world recognizes who you are. But it's only you that don't know who you are. That is why you're subjecting yourself to a contraption built by a man. Built by the hands of a man. Look at. Children of God submitting. Instead of you to submit yourself to the creation of the Almighty, you're submitting yourself to the creation of a mortal. Very shameful and very disgraceful. But we are here to correct you. And as a result of that, you remain in mourning. That is why we have been suffering from day one. They keep shrinking us. They have now shrunk us so much that if you ask a typical idiot in Abuja, uh, uh, where is the southeast? Uh, Ibo land, uh, the southeast. Uh, the five states. Because of that pain and suffering that we are undergoing, that was why Elohim Tukukikabiyama made us blind. We have forgotten there are Igbo people in Kogi. We forgot that are Igbo people in Benue. We forgot that are Igbo people in Cross River. We forgot that are Igbo people in Aguaibo. We forgot that are Igbo people in Bayelsa. Yes, Bayelsa. Yes. We forgot they took Igbo people away from us in Rivers. Took them away from us in Delta. Took them, took them away from us in Edo. Now, are you feeling what I'm saying? Because we have become blind. We no longer seek the face of God, Almighty in heaven. As our name says, I say what I say because of what our name says is who we are. That is our name. That is our own name that God gave to us. Because we represent the light. 
The name is is everywhere. All the way from Anambra, which is the capital of Igbo land, all the way, every part you have in here. Everybody answers light in here, in here, light everywhere. And then you come and you you cocoon yourself in darkness. That is the zoo. I don't want God to bless you. God cannot bless you in Nigeria. It's not possible. It is impossible. You, you, if you like, remain in Nigeria for one trillion years. God will never ever bless a Biafran. Like, individually, you may be rich, maybe like uh, you may be Ibeto or Enosin or whatever. You may be, you may be boy boy to change away, and they give you something and allow your business to to thrive. But the road that leads to your village will be a death trap. You will encounter armed robbery. You will encounter civil strife. You will encounter pain. You will see suffering on the faces of those that will come to your house every morning. Your life will never be complete. If you don't know. Now listen to what is happening to us. There is no lockdown in the north. No lockdown in the north. In Biafra land they said we should lock down. We should go indoors and stay indoors and lock down. Yes? And now let me tell you what is happening as a result of that. Let me tell you what is happening as a result of that. Listen carefully. Okay, man. Listen. She's speaking Igbo language and of course Ungwa dialect. They say sit at home. So everybody sit at home now, as usual. Now look at how we are being dealt with, how we are being punished. To tell you that the hand of God is in what is happening to us. I'm being honest with you. People who are not in the spirit can understand what we're saying. You can never ever understand what we are saying. Because we are now preaching the truth, that is why every force of darkness have now come to fight us. Including Facebook. And I want it to be posted. Where Facebook openly wrote to me and said, we disagree with this, your post that you made. We are limiting, which means suppressing the number of people that will see it. And that's exactly what they're doing today. And who are those doing it? Yoruba people working for Facebook. Black people doing this. Do you now understand the mess? When I tell you that the heart of a black man is evil, people say, oh, you, you're elevating uh, whites and uh, talking down on black people. But all the evil happening is from black people. The people suppressing, suppressing not just mine, every active IPOB family member on social media, on, on Facebook, his, his or her account is being suppressed. Have you asked yourself why? And those who are doing it. Do you think it is Zuckerberg in, in California doing it now? They got a contract from Nigeria. They took the money. They hired Yoruba people to put them there to be doing it. The same way they hired how the same way they how they hired the Fulani people to be managing BBC for them. The man the production manager, the program manager for BBC are all Fulani people. Are you aware of that? Our enemies are plentiful, but we are going to prevail. I'm, I'm telling without any, without any doubt. We have prevailed already. I say without any doubt, we have prevailed. What they don't know is that Facebook doesn't control YouTube. We are there streaming live. They don't control the FMs in Biafra land. We are there live. They don't control the satellites. We are satellites live. They cannot tell TuneIn what to do. They cannot tell Sweet Radio what to do. They cannot tell Simple Radio what to do. They cannot tell Garden Radio what to do. In all these platforms, people are listening to us. That's the hand of Elohim. That's how it works. Let us listen to our mother. Uh, 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 Biafran governors are saying, sit at home. Don't go out home. If you come out, we'll kill you. Meanwhile, the Janjaweeds are coming from the north. Let's listen to our mother. From Ongwa. I will, I will interpret for, oh, oh, for you, please. Don't worry, just listen to her. Hey. Hey, Fulani. Hey. Yes, man. Yes, man. Hey, Fulani, I'm away. Your brother, I'm coming. Oh, I'm in here. Oh, I'm going to. All of our farms are finished. Okay. I'm going to go to the house. 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 In our own land, our mothers go to the farm. They say, if you come close, we'll kill you. We'll rape you and we'll kill you. In our own land, and brought their life. While the governors are saying, sit at home, lock in, stay at home. Our farms are now fertile grounds for rape and murder, destruction of farm produce in our own land. 
in the land of the rising sun, the very center of this universe. I wouldn't say universe, I would say the earth. Can you believe that? These are governors. These are so-called political leaders. They foolishly call themselves elite. Do you see what they're doing to you? Do you see why they hate IPOB? Do you see why they don't want us to survive? Because we tell you the truth. These are our mother in the village. Who will hear her voice if not for us? Who will hear the voice of this woman if not for us? Let's listen. They, they brought their cattle into, into our farms. Told our, they basically destroyed the farm produce. Fed it to their, to their cattle. And said to our mothers, if you come, we'll kill you. Listen. They have, guns. they have guns and knives. Our mothers can no longer go to the farm. As I told you, in the year 2013, I warned you. I said, a time will come. They will rape your daughters. Your mothers will be afraid to go outside. I told you, in 2013, I warned you. But you won't listen. You are doing one Nigeria. You see the sort of one Nigeria? Have you, all of you idiots, you are one Nigeria. Want to be one Nigeria? You want to form a group uh, and counter IPOB? So, you want to be one Have you seen your one Nigeria? Have you seen the result of it? Aziki, whatever the idiot is, have you seen the result of your one Nigeria? Have you seen the damage that's done to us? Psychologically, our mothers. Because where we come from, our mothers don't go to the gym. They don't go to old people's home. They go to the farm. It's a form of exercise. They can no longer go to the farms. In our own land, in our own time, in 2020, people are running around. I'm a Nigerian. I'm, I'm evil. This thing, and I'm the kind of thing with IPOB. Listen to our mother in the village. Because you're in Abuja. As an idiot, the idiot that you are, you're in Abuja fooling yourselves. You're in Lagos, fooling, fooling yourselves. As our mothers are in the villages, afraid to go to the farm. Okay. Okay. They are dying of hunger. They can no longer go to the farm. These are our mothers. Can you believe that? Can you believe that? And people are doing, uh, they are doing, uh, or uh, and I go for now, and I used to, they are doing Igbo Ofala, they are dancing Ofala in America. They built Igbo village in America. But that's the one they have in the village. And the foreigners can't, their mothers can no longer go to the farm. And they have no shame. They are not ashamed of themselves. And when a white man looks at all these things that is happening, because you have no shame, that is why they treat you the way they treat you. You have no class and you have no shame. That's your mother in the village. You are in America, you are in Europe. Talking about one Nigeria. Let's move the country. Let us try and move the country forward and see what happens. You are busy speaking English you don't even understand. Whereas in the village, your mothers cannot go to the farm. And you're not ashamed of yourself. You're not ashamed. That is why I preach this gospel the way I do. If you look at the zoo called Nigeria, ask me why people are quiet. Tell me why your pastors, even those in Ongwa in Abba, tell me why you will not go and condemn this woman's experience. The pastor of the man said in tight. That handbag she's carrying you. Know, how much do you have there? Bring it. Put it in my palm. Your plight doesn't concern them. So what you're doing is that you're, you're witnessing wickedness from every side. From politicians, from your clergymen, from those you call your elders, from your traditional rulers. And when things are this way, the only way forward is an absolute overhaul of the system. A revolution. And that's what we're having. And what we will have. Fulani Khalifa, they left the northern borders open to allow their fellow terrorists to come in and take over our land. And any day now that we decide to go and confront them, you will see Channels TV, BBC. You see BBC? That won't come. Now they are killing us, BBC will not come. Never. You won't see BBC. There will be no CNN. Nothing. No, they won't come. But any day now, any day, 
see what happened in 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 in, in Delta State. In Abanam. You saw it. As soon as they've been killing and raping, the moment we rose up to say enough is enough, channels was there the next. The next minute they were there. They are, we are all Nigerians. Don't move. Nigerians are not living in the forest. This is the reason why we said no to elections. Because we know the quality of politicians on display. We know they will never speak. We knew that a time like this will come that would require leadership. Strong leadership. And we also know that they would fail. Have they not failed? Have they not failed, all of them? <laughs> they have failed. To make matters worse, how they can open their borders in the north and people are coming in is just beyond me. There's another interview I want to play for you. I want you to listen to what this man has to say. Listen to him to what he has to say. And as I said, keep saying to you, if you are kicked off from my page, which they are doing, please go somewhere else. There are many plenty. Just uh, download any of the apps and listen. Or go to YouTube. We are there. You can listen. They, they, they think they can frustrate us. Idiots. That's how foolish they are. Listen carefully, please. Listen. In Katsina State, Listen. I went to Kwaterekwashi. So along the Kwaterekwashi Kankara Funtua route, uh -huh. I saw Hausa youths blocking the road. He said, Hausa youths. Fulani headsmen, Hausa youths. So anybody telling you that the North is united, the North is all is talking rubbish. Because of what we are doing now, the Hausa youths they have woken up. They have now seen what we saw many years ago. How's that you say now we're blocking the road? How's that? Have you heard of that before? But if you see all the atrocities being committed by Fulani terrorists claiming they're headsmen, you will think, you say, oh, it's Hausa Fulani. Do you see why I said it is not Hausa Fulani, it's only Fulani that is causing this man? Have you heard this man? He was speaking on their national TV, which is channels, APC television, telling them the truth. For Hausa blocks the road against Polani because they're fed up. But you have some people who are who are supposedly Pia friends in Abuja talking rubbish that they want to be one Nigerian. One of us are running away. You, you want to come put your head in it as usual. As, as Aziki we did. I look at where you are today. Your mothers can no longer go to the farm. And you're, you're not ashamed of yourself. Listen, please. When I ask what is this, mm -hmm. they say their people are being killed. How is that people are being killed? Are you listening? How is that people are being killed? How is that they are being killed? Are you listening? <laughs> government is not doing anything. Government is not doing anything. I. Why is the government not doing Because there is no government. That is why the government is not doing it because there is nobody in power. Nobody is in office. Are you listening? Nobody is there. They bring down your em your embassy in, in Ghana. Nobody's talking. Foreigners are coming in, they say, with AK-47 to fight, to kill you in your villages. Nobody's talking. They go to Umwa. They kill. They rape. They dis dis dismember our people. Nobody's talking. And you're telling me you have a government? Now, it is now that it actually dawned on me that let me tell you one thing. Your so-called daddy GOs, that is your pastors, your politicians, and um, your uh, and traditional ruler, they are all working hand in hand. They, now they can no longer sell us as slaves. Believe you me, eh? if they had the opportunity now to start slavery, they will start all over again. Because they cannot sell us. The only thing left for them to do is to punish us as much as possible. To make our lives as, as miserable, as intolerable as possible. If we are dying, we can die. You are telling me that 40 years ago, even after the war, you will come into Igbo land, you will cut up a woman into, into six pieces. Scatter her bodies everywhere and nobody will do anything. Of course not. That is the sign of the times we are living in. This is the era of Ohanes and Gatron and Nushi. This is the era of 419 politicians. This is the era of high tech rigging. This is the era where Fulani Caliphate have come out full force to take over everywhere in this room. And it's happening before your eyes. The man is saying it. Even houses are being killed. 
Now, tell me why everybody should not rise up and say to hell with these Fulanis. Who are the ones causing this problem? They're the Fulani now. Who else is doing it? Every other ethnic group is a peaceful group. I'm being honest with you. We remove Fulan, everybody is peaceful. Everybody is. Yoruba is. Odudua is peaceful. Biafra is peaceful by nature. Hausa is even more peaceful by nature. Hausa, they are peaceful people. Ask yourself this question. Who are the ones bringing all these killings? This man is always Fulani. It's them. And they are the ones that need only two marks to go to school. Only two. They only need to score two to go to, to, to school. Others will score 140. Has that ever done on you before? Do you now understand the mess you're in? Do you understand the mess you're in? That is what we are trying. That is what gets us angry. And we are trying to make you understand. We speak English, you don't understand. We speak Hebrew, you don't understand. We speak uh, uh, ethic, you don't understand. Which order? How do you want us to explain this to you so you understand it? That your life is a mess. And it is your responsibility, your duty, your responsibility to do something about it. Now listen, please. Listen carefully. Notice. That a lot of the headsmen that I talk to, uh -huh. they don't speak English. Uh -huh. okay. I don't speak Hausa. Uh -huh. Because I said, Kate, came to me now. He said, he kept quiet. I said, May I say, Why are you Magana? Why is he not talking? He kept quiet. And they say, Kate, Seneca, Prada, they should stop speaking French. And they say, Two Palafras say, say we. Oui. He starts feeling comfortable. And I should talk, continue to talk. I found some of these people are from Mali. So from Mauritania. Now, what we are saying is Mali and Mauritania invading your land, coming to Adria State, going to Imo, going across Biafra land, by Elsa, rivers, killing people at will. <laughs> I have a president. My God in heaven. Hey, Nisio G, black people, you people are astonishing. You people amaze me. You know, there is a, there is a level of stupidity somebody will exhibit. You start avoiding them. For your own good. When somebody says I am a Nigerian, avoid that person for your own good. If somebody says, Oh, we believe in one Nigeria, avoid that person for your own good. You are telling me that in a country of, of professors and lawyers and doctors and uh, what I call backyard elite, people can come from Mauritania, from Mali. Speaking lesser passé, lesser passé français, I don't know what they call it. They can come in into the zoo, travel all the way to Benue, go to Akatu and kill people because they are following me. So, in case you are wondering, those coming from Mali and they are not just any, they are following me, so from Mali and from uh, Mauritania, following they come into your land and they kill you. And on top, some, some idiots will come and tell you one Nigeria. And it's time we start stoning them all. It's time we start stoning them. And to make matters worse, there are places now in Katsina. AIT was reporting. Katsina villagers now pay, pay monthly fees to bandits to evade attacks. Who call them bandits? Yoruba newspapers. Yoruba media. These are Fulani terrorists. They are now called bandits. They are terrorizing house people in Katsina. Fulani bandits terrorizing house of people in Katsina. Why are they doing it? Because houses we are foolish enough to allow them to come into their land uh, 200 years ago. And this is the result. The same thing that some idiots want us to do now. Oh, what you want is restructuring. What IPOB is doing is not good. All we want is restructuring to restructure the polity. Talking rubbish. Restructure so that sometime in the future, and I'm to be like Katsina. Well, we will not be paying the the full and the settlers in in um, in um, what's it called again? You know, Bunike. We we'll paying them now to maybe to go to stream to go fetch water. You know, they're in the Bunike big time. They are there, camped big time. And some idiots in the USA is claiming that from Bunike they are just in the USA eating hamburger, talking rubbish in America. Whereas their village is gone. That's how foolish they are. How foolish they are. You know that's something about us is that we don't we don't see things or call things for what they are. Do you go for Woody K selling land and giving you the full land name? So full land name or Woody K is gone. Go there and fetch water, let's see. 
The same thing that the Hausas did ignorantly and stupidly allowed Fulanis to come in. Today, they are as useless as, um, as the zoo itself. They are now paying bandits to be able, they are paying Fulani terrorists to be able to go and look for something to eat. In Nigeria, with a president, with a vice, with a chief of army staff, are you not daft? Are you not? I, I have not, uh, why won't I speak to you anyhow? Because you behave like a, like a fool. I want me to give you respect. How is that possible? I'm asking you. How is that possible? How? Just tell me how. You're in a country with a president, and people are coming from Mali, from Mauritania, to come and kill, and you keep quiet. And you, you're a president? <laughs> you people are jokers. Honestly, you are all jokers, all of you. Jokers, in the, all of you in the zoo. You are, you are a complete and absolute mess. What some of you don't know, I'll keep saying it, is that some of your criminal pastors are working hand in hand with these equally corrupt politicians who are not only corrupt, but very mediocre. They know how to do nothing. You don't have no light, no electricity because they are evil, they are mine. The same slave trade mentality. You know a black man to sell, to make a fellow black man suffer. It's what they enjoy most. Black people. That is the truth. If not, why would we be selling each other? Why did we sell our people? Now we want everybody to apologize to Africans. That's rubbish. Africans were the ones selling their own people. Nobody needs to protest to us. I'm being honest with you. That is nonsense. Protest for what? It was blacks that sold black people. If anyone is to apologize, a black people from Africa should apologize to blacks in South America and blacks in North America. That's how to do it. We are the ones that sold people. If, if, if there's no market, nobody will buy anything. Now that all the, all the supermarkets are shut, do, do you go out to buy anything? But if they open it, you go there, you buy something. It was Africans that opened the shop to say, we have our wives and our children to sell. And the world came to buy them. And sometimes when they come and there's no one to buy, they take it by force. That's how it is. That's why we have looting everywhere. Isn't it? If you go to buy something in the shop, and they tell oh, we're not going to sell to you. You loot the shop and you, 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 you need something, you take it. That's how life is. Africans opened up their land to say, I have my uncles to sell. Some will say, oh, I, have my, I want to sell my mother. I don't have, let me sell my mom. And they said that without conscience. I want God to love you. <laughs> you must be insane. That is the truth. Africans should be apologizing to black Americans for slave trade. Leave, leave Barclays alone and leave Church of England alone. If you have no markets, they will not be coming to buy from you. That is the truth. I am going to release our inquiry lines again, please. So if you see anything going wrong where you are, if you're, I want all of you to go and tell your pastor, your reverend father, whoever, you are a man, tell them next week Sunday. It's an assignment. They must speak out. If they don't know what to talk about, we'll tell them what to talk about. They must speak out and condemn what is happening. They must speak out and tell the truth that there is nobody in Asorok. Once they do it, things will be better for everybody. If they fail to do it, don't give them no offering. No offering. No tithe, no offering. They must speak the truth. They have the microphone and they must speak the truth. We get people everywhere. You see them? Publish those pictures, please. You see the pictures? They keep falling. When Jubril was there, they were going to see Jubril. Bishops, they go to see Jubril. They know that boy is not, was not, is not said Buhari they met in 2015. They know it. And they can't kind of Bible. Can't kind the of word of God. Deceiving themselves. And I'm asking them, that boy you're going to see, is that Buhari? All these bishops going to Asorok, that boy is there, there. Of course, Jubril, he has not run away. The, 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 the little, that comedian that is there now, that they gave a wife to last week, is that Buhari to you? That little boy, is he's not even up to 25 years old. Is that Buhari to you? You're carrying the word of God, Bible. Some of you are carrying Quran. Come on to speak the truth. Because you don't want to speak the truth, and uh, Buratai was able to call, not Buratai, uh, who is there now? Maybe um, Ibrahim Gambari will send their Fulani hit squad in the army to come and kill you. And uh, nobody will enjoy your private jet and um, and your choristers. You think we don't know? We know now. That is why you cannot speak the truth. 
And when I tell you the truth, you find it difficult to comprehend. Very difficult to comprehend. The pictures are there. Those that told you that, uh, uh, and of course, in a way, uh, Buhari is a Messiah because Biafra is coming. I, I pray seven times a day. And every day I tell God Almighty in heaven to go pick up Biafra. I want my own Biafra this year. I don't want it to, this year. I want Biafra in 2020. I don't want to, I don't want 2021. No, this year. And this is a time for us to work very hard. Do exactly as I tell you and you see what will happen. We must move to Twitter. You can see what Facebook is doing. We must move to Twitter before they buy up Twitter as well. We must move. They've done this thing to us before. In Israel, they, did to, they bought the company using a cover in America to buy it. And they, they, they terminated our contract. They, they tore up our contract. As a result of that, they have now bribed Facebook and Europe is working in Facebook. We must go to Twitter. I've been sounding this note of warning. Some of you don't want to hear. We must go to Twitter now. Because something will happen this year. We must go to Twitter to let the whole world know our story. If the world don't know, they have all the money, they have all the media, the Yoruba media is working with them. Because Yoruba is half Islam, half Christian. So Yoruba will always work with the Fulanese. Anybody telling you Yoruba will come and work with you is deceiving you. Yoruba will always work with Fulani forever and ever. That is the fact of life. That's the fact of life. Understand that very, very well, please. Please publish the numbers again on WhatsApp, please. WhatsApp only calls. Tell us what is happening in your church and your congregation. Tell us why your pastor, tell us what your pastor said when he went to the pastor and said, Pastor, why don't you condemn what is happening? And condemn the fact that there's nobody in Nazareth. And then let us know what your pastor says. The numbers are there, please publish it. Publish the number, please, on my page, on my Facebook page, please publish it. Somebody wrote very movingly that I should be very polite to people. Uh, I should say what I'm saying, but I shouldn't insult them. Uh, better, <laughs> Americans bought you as slaves. The Europeans bought you as slaves. The two great religions of the world bought you as slaves. Christianity bought you. Islam bought you as slaves. That is the fact. You may want to deny it. You're talking rubbish. But of course, the first slavery was sanctioned by the Pope. That is a fact. Historical fact. Go and do your research. Than being a sentimental African buffoon who doesn't reason very well. Go and do your research. You'll understand it. The Pope gave his... In fact, go and Google it if you want. It was the Pope that gave authorization. That's, that's nothing wrong with slavery. And I don't blame him. You had people to sell. Some of you wanted to... You sold your mothers. You sold your fathers. Some of you came from lineage of slave dealers. Some of you in Abuja. And those of you petition writers with your pen. Uh, blue, red, and black. Looking for who to do boy boy for. Okay, I have something to write. I have an idea. Let me write. Against IPOB. Maybe you give me some money. My rent has uh, run out. So you don't know that? Some of you don't know. Some of you don't know. That is why you are wallowing in ignorance. Because what I tell you is the truth. The truth you will not hear from anywhere else in the whole world. You can nobody, the truth, I, nobody will dare tell you this very truth. I told America, I went to America, and I, I, was, in, I was in Capitol Hill, and I told them, your, every ambassador you send to Nigeria is a multi-millionaire because they see the truth and they lie to the State Department. I told them in America, face to face, your ambassadors to Nigeria are corrupt. They were shocked and looking, they were looking at me. You said, what, what, what is this man? I said, yes. Yes, 100%. Every ambassador from a major country going to Nigeria is a millionaire overnight. They buy their silence. If you go to the dispatch now, from Abuja to State House, from Abuja to the, to the foreign I don't know what is wrong with these mad people everywhere. They will not listen. They will not listen. And I'm going to turn this line off completely. For these people are mad. They're insane. They are insane. insane, And I will block them. Never again will they be able to call this line. Never again. These people are mad. They're insane. Unbelievable. I have never seen... So that is why Fulania are 
uh, and make, making a mess of their lives. I don't understand these people. I don't understand them. I just don't understand them. And I will never understand them until Biafra comes. Perhaps they have been blocked. They will not be able to call again forever and ever. That's how it goes. You're, you're deliberately trying to disrupt the flow of this very gospel that we're preaching. Facebook is having a heart attack. Don't you know that? They are panicking, writing to me all the time. This, this page is about to be unpublished. We will unpublish it. We are suppressing people coming to your page. We will continue to suppress it. These are Yoruba, 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 and Minhanin. Yorubas are the ones doing it. Yorubas are the ones doing it. Very, very sad indeed. Extremely sad. That's how it is with black people. That is why if you... Do you, do you think that we start selling each other today? <laughs> it's from time. If there is no... Or you go to buy, like those that claim they are from... Uh, uh, now it's now South South. <laughs> if there is... Like a green clock, if there is no... Oh, you bought to sell people to... Let me sell you to Fulani. That's, what, that's how they make their money. All those talking about one night. That is where they make their money. Of course, it took a... So it's Ecuador. Assange is Ecuador, not Chile, please. It's Ecuador Embassy, not Chile. Ecuador Embassy. Thanks for the correction. I know it's Ecuador, it's not Chile. It escaped my, my mind. I didn't quite remember. It's Ecuador he was taking refuge. That place he took refuge in, Ecuador, is... That territory belongs to Ecuador. I remember, do you know Prince Philip, the man you have now as the, the husband to her Britannic Majesty, Queen Elizabeth II? He was born in the UK. And then when he was about to be born, the Prince Philip of Yugoslavia was about to be born, the hospital where he was born was converted into a Yugoslavian embassy. And was declared Yugoslavian territory because he is not allowed a future heir to the throne cannot be born outside Yugoslavia are you listening to me the hospital was named declared Yugoslavia so that the child prince can be born there so in the future he could have inherited his um, his throne that's how things are done every embassy is your home if the police are pursuing you you run into an embassy that's the end of it they can't go in it's Ecuador, not Chile, please. I stand corrected. Thank you very much for that. Thank you very, very much for that. The name Ecuador uh, skipped my brain. Thank you very, very much for that. A lot of people are calling in to say, um, I don't want to, don't call, please, no distraction. No distraction, please. And to tell you the message you're in, which your pastors will never preach about. Remember the man called Mal uh, Magu? You remember what I talked about? A while ago, I told him, I have not, I just want to, just, what is happening now is nothing. They are still holding Oli Sametu. And I told them, the more you hold Oli Sametu, the more mess you'll be in. Now, USA has opened an investigation into Funtua and the rest of them. And now, Magu is in trouble as well. And I, I remember telling you live on air that Magu of EFCC is a thief. I said, my justification for calling for the release of all those of Kyle and Oli Sametu is because those that claim they are persecuting, they are thieves themselves. I told you live on air here. And now what has happened? Malami is now writing to the presidency because nobody is there. Nobody can remove my good now. How can I remove him? That's not president. He says that, listen to this. The Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Mr. Mubaka Malami, has recommended to whoever they are calling Buhari, I don't know who the person is, to sack Magu of EFCC. What did Magu do? He was diverting funds, which means looting the loot, looting the loot, and also insubordination. EFCC, Magu, a full and a man, is a thief, is a criminal, is a robber. But he put Olisa Metu in jail. Put all Joseph Kalu in jail. Thankful all Joseph Kalu is out. And Olisa Metu must come out. This is only the beginning. It's a fun tour. This is the, by the time we are done with the uh, Fulani Caliphate or Emirate, none of you will go to the US again. All your assets that will be frozen. I told you, that executive order that Trump signed, you don't know what it means. Some of you don't know. Because of course we don't read. 
How can we know? We don't read. Tomorrow somebody will tell me, oh, you're trying to value uh, uh, Caucasians over black people because we have failed to reason. And because we have failed to reason, there is no way I'm going to support evil. It's not possible. And uh, you, you, when you are in a country where somebody who scores two out of 150, they score two. And they are made president. Somebody who scored 138, they say you are part of the 5%, you will not even appoint you, will not even consider you. And you are in that country. And you are supporting that country. How do you want me to describe you? How, I ask you, how do you want me to describe you? Then the list has come out. Uh, you'll be like Southern Sudan. I say, yes, so may we be, may Biafra be like Southern Sudan because today, Southern Sudan is the fastest growing economy in the whole of Africa. The fastest growing economy in Africa. The fastest growing economy in Africa is South Sudan because they are free from the Janjaweed of the North. And you're telling everyone, uh, what we want is a restructured Nigeria. Oh, we are every talking rob people, rubbish. Nonsense. We are going. Elohim Chuko has broken this. What do you, what has one God to do for you? Is it God to come and uh, do a miracle and uh, buildings will come out and uh, Biafra independence will be there? I've given an example with Jericho, the fall of the wall of Jericho. Elohim said, just walk around the wall seven times. That's all. I'm asking you, you're not going to walk around as a rock seven times, so, with your two feet, no? Go to Twitter. We need millions of people on Twitter. And then you see how we're going to collapse the zoo. Just overnight. Because there's nobody there. There is nobody there. There is no there is no Buhari. There is no Sibajo. There is no Buddha. There is nobody there. You do as you like. Don't you know that? That's the end of the zoo. The people holding Nigeria are Yoruba Muslims who are intimidating the Yoruba Christians to align with their fellow uh, uh, brotherhood in the, in the north. We have a, a, a pig somewhere, uh, you know, with his, uh, you know, snout in the trough, you know, a pig. Yes, you are here. That's all. So, Biafra land is free. We are on our own. We have some traitors, that is true. We have, or has been established as a, as a traitorous group of, 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 how can I describe them? I have no words to describe them. The day they are evil will make bear for all to see, that day you will know that these men, are, they don't deserve to live. I'm telling you the truth. Because of them, that is why when your mother goes to the farm, they rape her. You know, some, some of our, your mother won't tell her she be raped. If our mothers tell us what they encounter in the farms every blessed day, then you will know. Understand that very well. South Sudan, number one. Rwanda, number two. Ivory Coast, number three. Cote d'Ivoire, number three. Number four is, uh, is uh, Ethiopia. Number five is Senegal. Six is Benin Republic. Seven is Uganda. Eight is Kenya. Nine is Mozambique. Ten is, uh, is, is Niger. Uh, Niger, uh, Niger. Niger, anyway. Burkina Faso is number 11. There is no zoo. A Fulani woman that went to school with only two is in charge of your finance. And you want to be considered as a developing country. You are insane. It never happened. No president either. Your pastor will not tell you about this because let me tell you the truth. No amount of Holy Ghost fire can give you a job. The world is not like that. No amount of Holy Ghost fire or quoting of the Bible can give you accommodation. You can stand on the road, that's your pothole road, and pray and, uh, 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 I don't know, call down fire from a mountain. That road will never be built. <laughs> your pastors should tell you the truth. It is governments that create the enabling environment that allows jobs to be created. I will teach the zoo something. You see the railways that are building all over the zoo, apart from Biafran. 
I was the person that gave them the idea when I was in detention at DSS. I gave them the idea to build railways. Me, I'm the canon. I told the Nigerian government to go and build railways. I told them. They were wondering how they can get employment. I gave them the idea. Personally, I gave it to them. But let me give them another advice. Maybe they are too corrupt. They will not be able to understand or implement it. It is called... I've, I've preached this before. Political economy. Political economy is the marriage of political and economics. Now, ask yourself, how did China become a major power in the whole world with so many entrepreneurs, billions of them? Are you thinking that all those people, they just transmuted from communism into capitalism overnight? Where did they get the capital from? That is the key thing as an entrepreneur. Where do you intend to get your initial capital from? In a country that is just emerging, what you need to do is you go through the phase of your development called the political economic phase where the political aspirations match the economic potentials of that very nation you marry the two together in other words you find the government financing capital projects and those capital projects are built by the companies in that very country so that the money circulates that is why in China you have Chinese firms, engineering firms, building skyscrapers, building roads, building bridges, building railways, building sewer systems. So the money stays within. Unlike the zoo, where you graduate nearly 10,000 engineers every year, but Julius Berger, a German firm, has a contract for life. Do you understand? So, even your engineers do not have the opportunity to learn to improve on their skills. They end up driving kekana pep. Do you see how we have turned life upside down? The meaning of life does no longer exist. It doesn't exist anymore. That's how foolish we are. That was why people are now beginning to realize that Asorok is empty. Your daddy G.O., they know about this, but not utter, they will never ever utter any word. Because, believe it or not, some of these pastors, I said some of these pastors, they depend on corruption in the false federation of Nigeria to continue living large, buying aircraft at their own expense. Let me tell you one thing you don't know. If we do the world, we are to become free today. Every mega Yoruba church will collapse. Do you know why? People will focus all their energies on developing the land for everybody. And once people realize that prayer and fasting alone cannot give you a job, prayer and fasting cannot give you a house, prayer and fasting can never ever in your life give you a good road, they will abandon them. So for all these corrupt pastors to remain relevant, they need corruption in Nigeria and they need the broken system of Nigeria to remain in place. Simple logic. Simple logic. Because are you telling me people will be busy if if or do the world have to be free today or be able to be free? Who will have time to go to church? We'll be we'll work 24 hours a day. We'll be working every day, we'll, we'll go to work. And then only then will you realize that the knowledge of God is a personal encounter, not something that somebody will tell you about. It's personal. Very, very personal. Very, very personal. Why should a man of God, I ask you, why should a man of God be afraid to stand up to say that the demolition of the Nigerian embassy in Ghana is an affront? An affront. But people will look at it, they don't, I don't know where, but they are all graduates. So, so don't, don't have PhD. Can't, somebody will, can't you sit down and ask yourself, why would a, a should I say, a restricted area uh, be breached? Not only that, and the buildings destroyed. Why? And the president of the country affected hasn't said anything. What sort of human 
What sort of human beings are, are you people? What sort of human beings are what sort of human beings are you people? What sort of human beings I ask are you people? I don't understand it. I just don't understand it and I will never understand it until everybody begins to reason like a human being. Until we begin to reason like a like human beings, I'm telling you. We right now we don't. We do not reason like human beings. We don't. I tell you, it's disgraceful and very shameful. Somebody wrote to me and said, please try to be kind. There are many people that want to listen to you, but you insult people a lot. His name is Victor Linus, because I read every comment on my page, actually I do. It's Victor Linus. He wrote and he said, Mazen Nam the Kano, please, we want you to speak politely. We want you to be to be ruthless and insultless tomorrow. He was writing yesterday. Remember that thousands of people are watching you. I thought I would have said millions of people are watching. He said thousands are watching you. Try to be polite. And I made myself a promise to this man called Victor Linus for actually writing. I said, I will be polite. But before I came on air, they had killed a woman and spread her body parts all over the place in Biafra land. Our mothers can no longer go to the farm. The zoo embassy in Ghana demolished. No speech from the president. No one is saying anything. Instead of a president, you have now the presidency. Uh, the uh, head of EFCC uh, indicted. Everybody can loot and steal as they wish. Why won't I insult those who are tolerating such intolerable behavior? That, that's what I'm asking. So you see, Victor Linus, it's not my fault. As long as we continue to be stupid and foolish, it is my duty to continue to call out our people because anything you do that is foolish, I will tell the whole world. Because this is the reason why we are still undeveloped. There was something that I came across and I was shocked. I was shocked. I posted this. That was two days ago. So yesterday, actually, I did. Let me drink some water. I posted something on my page about... Papua New Guinea, how they are treating black people there. Something struck me. Why is it all over the world? If, 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 where people are suffering is always black people. Why? And then it came back to what I used to say all the time. The way we reason is flawed. That is number one. And number two, Africa is nothing to write home about. Black Africa is a disgrace. And as long as black Africa is a disgrace, black people will continue to be disgraced all over the whole world. And Africa will remain in darkness until the light that is Biafra is allowed or is switched on, more or less. Until Biafra is switched on by virtue of independence, Africa will continue to dwell in darkness. And every black person anywhere in the world is a fair game. People can do to them whatever they like. Why am I saying this? Because even in Iraq, can you believe that? Black Iraqis, there are black people in Iraq as well. And they are suffering. I want it posted, please. The community, black people in Iraq, these are Iraqis or so they are black, of whom Many are descendants of Africans, African slaves. We sold them also to Iraqis, as I told you before. Arabs came, they bought us. Europeans came, they bought us. Arabs that came to buy us brought Islam to us. We swallowed it hook, line, and sinker as the blacks we are. The Europeans, after buying us, uh, uh, taking us uh, on the cheap, they gave us Christianity as compensation. <laughs> that is why today you have a community of black people, descendants of slaves. They are in Iraq and they are crying also. They said, what happened to Floyd George, George Floyd has taught them a lesson that they too are suffering in Iraq. Iraq of all places, there are blacks there. How did they get there? Through slavery. And who sold them? fellow black people in Africa. I want God to love you. 
That is why that Bible you're carrying, sometimes you're wasting your time. What God wants you to do, you have not done it. True repentance can only come by setting the children of God free. Until that happens, your daddy G.O. will never speak out against the evil happening because he is a direct beneficiary. He is benefiting from the corruption in Nigeria. Without corruption, how are you going to have mega churches? How? People go to church because they are suffering. People are in pain. There is hunger and poverty, so they have to go somewhere to look for a miracle. When you're comfortable and you're very wealthy, are you looking for a miracle? Then, only then can you worship God with clarity of mind and a sense of purpose. Not when you're hungry. You do anything to survive. If they say, give me that hundred naira you have now, so that God will bless you tomorrow, you have food tomorrow, you will give the person immediately. That is why they preach prosperity. They don't preach salvation. They preach prosperity. Like God said, God multiply you, I'll give you all the riches. And they are flying in their private aircraft. And you can't even go to the farm to go and harvest cassava, to fry garlic, to sell, to pay the tithes for next week. And if you give them, they will take. They see all this evil happening, they say nothing. I am saying it now and I will keep saying it. We black people, we need to apologize for our role in slavery. We started the selling of people. We did. Africans did. Africans must apologize. Not Europeans or Americans. So in our next life, we'll learn how to value life. I've shown it to you in the book of Exodus. 21.16 The day we started selling people through the coastal region of Biafra land, through your land, started selling them. That was the day that God said bye bye to Africa. That you people are evil. You are the only people in the history of humanity to commercialize the sale of your own people. In the history of the whole world. <laughs> I want God to, against, you're going against the word of God. I want God to love you. I, I think you're, 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 some people are insane. You don't know God. That means some of you don't know God. You don't know. You don't know. The God you claim you worship, you don't know him. You don't. You have no idea who he is and how he operates. He gave you a commandment. Do not. Do not sell anybody. He's here in Exodus. If you sell, your punishment is death. I will not die today for selling our people to, to Arabs and to, and to, to Europeans. And you still have the temerity to get up and to say black life matters. Matters to who? To you that sold them. Have you repented in Africa? You that sold them from Africa, have you repented? Have you repented yourself? You have not. You're still selling them. The only reason why you're not selling us now is because there is nobody to buy. Um, so I'm so sorry. In fact, we are, we are still being sold in Libya. I would have been sold in Libya. Where is this your moral? Where is this your righteous indignation? Where is it? How come you're not morally outraged about what is happening in Libya? Blacks are being sold in Libya right now, right this very second. What have you done as a black man or a black woman? What have you done? Nothing. You've done nothing. You want to go and pray and fast so God will bless you as He blessed your neighbor without going to work, without investing your money. Let me let me tell you something. Let me help grow the zoo economy. That money you pay as tight every week, go and invest it in the Lagos Stock Exchange. Put that money there and after one year you go back and see, that is correct blessing, you see it before your eyes. You will see God blessing you immediately. All the money you gave to your daddy G.O. to buy a jet, how did, you, how did you benefit from it? All the money you gave to daddy G.O. to go and buy a private jet and build mansions, how did you benefit? The money you give to IPOB, we are fighting for Biafra, and Biafra will come, you will see it. That is what is getting you. The money you give to the GO, what is it going to get for you? Unless you are telling me that to get into the kingdom of heaven, you need to buy your way through. Is that it? Of course, the people are complaining that my the Facebook is cracking very seriously. Of course, it will crack. It will crack. Let us... Stop the let us 
<laughs> Please go to YouTube and you go to to I don't know if Radio Biafra is stable. I don't know if Radio Biafra Live is stable. Radio Biafra is stable. I think it is stable. My page is under tremendous attack. Heavy, heavy, <laughs> heavy attack. We are going to come out of it and then restart it all over again. All over again on Facebook, please. Try to bear with us. We are going back. <laughs> they can't handle this gospel, can they? It's your Kuchineke. It's your Kuchineke. They cannot handle it. They can't. How can they handle it? It is impossible. They can't. <laughs> because they are, they are criminals. They are criminals. They are criminals. They cannot handle it. They can't handle it. We are going back live on my page, of course. We are going back live on my page. We are going back live on my page. We are back again live on my page. On Facebook, I'm not the channel. The whole world is listening. The time now is precisely, I think, in the blessed land of Biafra. It is 9 p.m. 9 p.m. in the blessed land of Biafra. I think they have shut the whole thing down altogether. Anyway. I think they have shut it down. <laughs> I don't think. Uh, they don't want me to broadcast on my page anymore. Oh, nothing. They are coming back now. <laughs> they are coming back. <laughs> oh, dear. Zoo. Zoo. And, and they are your bad side. Sidekicks. <laughs> Radio Biafra is very clear. They are saying, somebody, Amy Patrick, said I should continue. Yes. Uh, yes. Abaneje. Yes, they said I should continue. Radio Biafra is loud and clear, so Radio Biafra is okay then. It's okay. That's very good. Then we are back again on my page. We are back again on my page. And I don't even know. Now they are not even showing me how many people who are listening. They can't even tell me how many who are listening. That is how terrible it is. They are panicking. They are panicking. They are panicking. Because they have lost it. They have lost it. They have lost it. And we have won, as usual. The whole world is listening to us and they're panicking. There are blacks in Iraq, they are suffering all the blacks in Iraq. And who is responsible for the suffering of black people in Iraq? Africans that sold them, please. Not Arabs. Africans that sold Africans into slavery should be ashamed of themselves. They should be ashamed of themselves. They are ashamed of themselves. Everywhere else is very clear, apart from my pain. <laughs> then we must continue to preach as Elohim has commanded us to. We must preach this very gospel. Now, there was a man that attempted to speak. And I keep asking, why are you silent? I ask the pastors, the religious leaders, those that claim that traditional rulers, why, I, how come all of a sudden the Sultan of Sokoto is no longer, Sultan of Sokoto, you no longer speak. You no longer talk. One tried to speak and he said, <laughs> That uh, Buhari is not active anymore. Uh, that is a is a is a uh, Pastor Ayodele. Instead of him to come out as a man of God to say Buhari is no longer alive, he said Buhari is no longer active, and we accept. And he said that the government will meet a greater challenge from IPOB. And I'm saying, of course, they will. 2020, hey, they will, oh, they must, they must. I'm, I'm, I'm planning to live this year. This year. What am I doing in the zoo? What am I doing in the zoo? Um, I keep asking, what am I doing in the zoo? They brought out one idiot to say uh, that um, uh, 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 South South, you know, at least as I wrote, we have cured them of the disease of Niger Delta. Darkness inside darkness. And that is why the waters of the Niger Delta, as they uh, used to call themselves, is black. Polluted and very filthy. Because you said you are Niger Delta, which is black darkness, a delta of darkness inside Nigeria, which is darkness itself. Double darkness, only you. And you want to be developed. You have cursed yourself already. Now they have run to South South. Now this uh, Pastor Yodele is telling you that um, the zoo is being on a time bomb. Why won't it be on a time bomb? Why not, I ask. Of course it will be on a time bomb. Why shouldn't it be? Question about money if we are going home this year. Oh, the zoo. 
Anyway, let me not say much. I will continue to focus my lectures on these critical areas. Given that it has come to our understanding that the root of all the problems associated with the shameful plight of a black man, or should I say black people all around the world, stems from, it is coming from our subconscious ignorance. A black man is ignorant, subconsciously is ignorant of the facts of life. And what they have done is to wrap this very cleverly in this religion. They, they, they put it in religion. They wrap it. And that completes your stupidity. They take something and they wrap it in religion. That completes your idiocy. Religion cannot give us anything in life. It can only give you the grace of God. It cannot give you anything. Religion cannot give you nothing. Absolutely nothing. Only grace of God can. And grace of God is not the same thing as religion. There are people who don't go to church. They don't go to synagogue. They don't go to the mosque. And they are holy. Holier than those that go to all these places. If you don't know, let me tell you. We must continue. We need to continue. And as I said earlier, I want to substantiate. I want to crystallize. I want to substantiate the assertion I made earlier. I want to make it abundantly clear. They are hacking and attacking my page. My goodness me. Listen very carefully, please. Church of England and Bank of England apologize for historic slavery links. Anglican Church is saying today that the fact that they doubled into slavery is a source of shame. Anglican Church. <laughs> we are some of us, we are baptized in. <laughs> as soon as they stopped buying slaves to sell and make money, <laughs> they told you Jesus is Lord. <laughs> I, hey, Monsieur G, black people, may the good Lord have mercy on us. <laughs> Hey, no wonder they call us nigger, call us everything, relegate us to the background, everything horrible they do to us, and they get away with it. A whole church of God. In that same, they come with the Bible, though, mind you, they brought the good news, Bible, the knowledge of Jesus Christ. And what is the Bible? The Bible comprises of the Old and the New Testament. And these people, these Europeans that brought us this Bible, inside that same Bible, in the book of Exodus 21, 16, Deuteronomy 24, 7, the same Bible they gave, they gave us when they came, that Bible said, you should not sell anybody. It's in the Bible. Because once you're a Christian, automatically you follow the ways of Jesus Christ and then you're a Jew. That's what it means. You practice the religion of Moses the same way that Islam, to an extent, practices the religion of Moses till tomorrow morning. That's what it means. That Bible that they brought and said, the Bible, you remember we used to call the Bible the good news. This good news we are bringing you salvation through Jesus. Nobody's doubting that. But inside that Bible, it says you should not buy or sell anybody. After buying us and selling us and making money out of us and building beautiful cathedrals, beautiful churches, beautiful roads and cities with our bones and our flesh and our blood, they said to us that uh, the road to salvation politically and economically lies in the Bible, which is a lie. <laughs> a big lie, of course it is a lie. <laughs> Today the church is apologizing. Church of England is apologizing. The church where some of us were baptized is apologizing for dehumanizing us as a race. Do you see where I have a problem with the brain of black people? It is not one priest or two, as, as it was with the Roman Catholicism and pedophilia. Not one or two. The whole church sat down, maybe did their synod meeting. And decided it will be economically viable for the church of Jesus Christ, of Anglican communion, 
to go and start selling fellow human beings from Africa to make money? A church. And as they were selling it, they were establishing their personages, establishing their churches, telling us the brothers good news. <laughs> ah, black people. And this year, G. Black! Black! <laughs> I can't it happen. Oh, dear me. Church of England, which is Anglican Church. Anglican Communion. Apologize for their historic links to slavery. We are ashamed, so says the church. We are ashamed of doing something that God said you shouldn't do. And that thing was contained in the same Bible you brought to us to say this is good news from Jesus. And that good news from Jesus, Jesus said you shouldn't sell your fellow human beings. And you did, you made money from it. And after, I don't know, maybe 130 years, you're not apologizing. <laughs> and we are still going to those churches. <laughs> <sighs> this UG black. <clears throat> if you want to debate anything I've said, you debate me. Don't hide behind your foolishness and ignorance to talk crap. Debate me so I can swallow you alive with facts and figures. I'm ashamed, honestly speaking. When I tell you that the problem we have is in our brain, now you can understand it. So all these years, we've not even read the Bible very well. That's what it means. Now, oh, it's only now that the church of Anglican Church is now saying, please forgive us. And I expect the Roman Catholic Church to do the same. It was a Pope who announced slavery. A Pope of Catholic Church who announced it. It is the truth. Historical fact. That is what I preach. Historical Take your useless sentiment to the grave. I don't give a damn. I preach the truth. Here is a coaching again. Disprove me based on the points that I raise. Not on your stupid village African sentiment. Have no time for that rubbish. Did Anglican church double into slavery or not? The answer is yes. Was slavery not condemned by God in the Bible? Yes. Some would tell me, uh, but the Bible said, be loyal to your slave, be loyal to your master. I said, it's because you're a black African man, you have no sense of reasoning. Do you know what is called oh, Ibo Dibo? Have you heard about that before? Apprenticeship. That is what the Bible meant by uh, an apprentice, be loyal to your master, not slave. Not slave. I don't know where these dumb people are coming from. Where they're coming from? Ibo Ibo. That is why you have a my master or my lord. When you go to Tanzania, you're going to go to Aria Aria, and you're doing apprenticeship. It's Ibo Ogu. That's what we call it. To be a slave, it, it, it can be translated to slavery. It doesn't mean literally you're you're the person's property. No, it means you're serving a master. That's why you call somebody my lord. It doesn't mean that lord in heaven. It means somebody you serve. That's the meaning of it. Some of us, we go to school, we don't even understand the... So that I won't call it... I won't use the word minutiae. Nuances of English language. We don't know it. We don't know it. But we are all intellectuals, aren't we? We are all intellectuals. I don't know what is happening. They are panicking. I don't know. Maybe they have shut down my page. I have no idea. The gospel is too hot. They cannot handle it. Darkness is fleeing. If God saw God saw, they cannot handle it. The children of perdition, the offsprings of Lucifer cannot handle this gospel this evening. It's too hot for them. This is your good genetic. This proved me on the facts. Not your stupid sentiments. I'm not doing anything with it. I want facts. Biafra will be run on facts and figures. For your information. We are the ones fighting for Christianity. I am the one fighting for Christianity. I am fighting for Christianity. Me. 
our forefathers, as I wrote very convincingly, never, our ancestors were never afraid of any subject. Never! Everything was discussed in the open. Oh, oh, don't discuss religion! It's then you are not prepared for Biafra then. That's what it means. You are not ready for Biafra. Am I asking you not to believe in the nonsense that you believe in? Did I stop anybody from believing in whatever thing that you believe in? I am an Igbo man, an Igbo Biafran. And I grew up in the village. Not all this when I grew up in the township that know nothing. I grew up in the village. Onyen Achiya, you and is between you and your God. Sometimes when you do something, they will say, Onyen Achiya, which means that's the agreement between you and your God. Even your mother will tell you that. Sometimes a mother will lose a child. And you see people coming to console the mother, and the mother will say, that was the decision my child reached with his God. Some of you did not grow up in the village, so you don't know any of these things. You have no idea what they are. Spirituality in the township is different though, from the one we got in the village. Very, very different, I tell you. After now, you know. That is the decision he reached with God. Even your mother will say it. Which means that everybody, spirituality and the knowledge of, and the knowledge of God is a personal thing. It is not a group thing. It is personal between you and your God. That is why somebody can come out and go to the Father's shrine and destroy it and set a new one. Uh, now, now we start with, oh, don't, don't discuss religion. Oh, don't. That was how they deceived you. That was why for nearly, should I say 300 years, you never knew, it never occurred to you that slavery is in the Bible, that God said no to slavery. Even the person that brought the Bible to you, he, um, uh, he knew he was there because they wrote it. They gave it to you. Open your eyes. Oh, salvation has come from Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is salvation, yes. Of course, we know that. But then they never showed you why he said that what the English were doing was wrong. What the Seventh Anglican Church was doing is wrong. You give us Bible with one hand, you take us as slaves with another hand. Now you're apologizing. These are the people. Had people not debated religion, do you think Anglican Church would apologize? Had people not debated religion, do you think that all those pedophiles in the Catholic Church would have confessed? Do you know how much the Catholic Church paid in compensation? Google it. So if they say, no, 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 don't discuss religion. So that means you are now allowing pedophiles to molest our children. Because uh, nobody should discuss religion. Who told, who told you that in Biafra land? Who, 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 who gave birth to you? Everything will be discussed. In Bia, everything, in Bia, everything will be discussed. We cannot hide under superstition and ignorance to talk rubbish. In Biafra land, everything will be out in the open. That is the type of country we want to run. For your information. For your information. You can believe in whatever thing you want to believe in. That is your business. That is your business. But I'm just giving you the facts. That, that the religion that you claim you believe in came through slavery. They took your slaves. For your information, go and read it. Read up on it for your information. In my village, they haven't done one more. There are women who stay by the river. They worship a goddess in the river. There are some houses you go to see a woman who draws snake on the wall. Does that make them less of a human being? No. That is who they want to worship. That is their business. Don't impose it on me. I won't impose mine on you. Don't impose yours on me. That's all. Oh, yeah, Nakia. I don't know how many times I will explain this all the time. Onyena Chia, for your information. You go to church and you hand over your, 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 your hard earned money to somebody to go and buy a private jet. Are you, are you not insane? Are you not an idiot? In the name of paying tight. Are you, are you, not, are you, are you not a complete idiot? I'm going to bring palliative. You want to share from the palliative? How many, how many did your pastor bring to you? How many pastors shared palliatives? I'm asking you. How many shared it? I 
spent 50 million. How many of your pastors check palliatives? I'm asking you. Go and buy the more jet now. And the, the gates of heaven will open for you. And you walk in mad. <laughs> Black people everywhere. Do you know the funniest thing? Even can Christian Association of Nigeria, they don't have ordinary, ordinary Twitter handle. Can. So all the killings being done is nothing. They depend on newspapers writing um, their press statements for them. As, I, as we are suffering, IPOB is suffering, spending over $100,000 every month fighting the Satan that is zoo, fighting for the lives of Christians. I have published the letter that I wrote many times to Trump and to Pompeo that prompted them, in fact, in line with uh, no, there are people, other people who are working. Let me put it that way, please, before they start complaining tomorrow. I send them the kind of to glory for, for something. I write, go to my Twitter handle, you will see Christianity. I, every blessed day, I fight for Christians. Every day. You that are a Christian, are you on Twitter? How many times have you tweeted any word power to say Christians are dying? Are you on Twitter? I'm asking you. A whole Christian association of Nigeria is not on Twitter. I'm the one that tweets for them. And people are dying, they cannot do anything about it. They cannot do anything about it. That is how how daft some of them are. There are good men, of course. There are good men of God. I'm not I'm not saying that if I think Coca Coca also spoke again, uh, was it yesterday or today? He is outspoken, I said it. So I've spoken. Bishop Coca, the Catholic Bishop of Sokoto. Hassan Coca. Very outspoken. He spoke again yesterday. I like him. He speaks out. Most of the most of the priests that have to be Afratin tomorrow, they are Catholics. Mostly from Ireland. I like them. I respect them. It doesn't mean if I say something wrong, I will say it. Please. Please. Alleged Christian, let me remind all of you, and I want to post it. Alleged Christian persecution. Presidency accuses IPOB of misleading the United States and the United Kingdom. Not Christian, not can. IPOB. IPOB. The presidency of the zoo is that because we did a lot of work. A lot, and it's still ongoing till now. And some idiots will rise up and stupidly and ignorantly try to accuse us of being anti-Christian because they are foolish. Very, very foolish. People. Foolish. What I have done for Christians in Nigeria, all the bishops put together have not done half of it and can never do not a billion years. Over $100,000 every month. And instead of some of you to be grateful, you are busy talking rubbish. See if you're insane. Who is fighting for Christians if not IPOB? Who is fighting for Christians if not IPO on a consistent basis? Because you people are you are black people, you fight for one week and you give up. Why are you not on, 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 on Twitter? Because you cannot post selfie on Twitter. It's serious, it's a serious platform. Are you on Twitter? So you don't know that you can reach world heads of state via Twitter? You don't know that? Oh, goodness me. When the zoo presidency says IPOB is carrying this Christian matter on their head and lobbying governments of the world, some of you did not say it. You didn't say it, did you? We are spending our hard-earned money to try to make your lives better, to keep you safe in the zoo, and you're not grateful. You cannot be grateful. Something that your daddy Joe has never done, I can never do. Are you telling me that Adebo, any of this book can bring out $100,000 a month to lobby to fight for you? I'm asking all the Christians in the zoo, God, Nigeria. Tell me the church that will bring out a hundred thousand every month to lobby and to fight for Christians. How many of you will do it? IPB does it every month. 
yet you're not grateful. Typical black people, ungrateful people, a country of hypocrites. That was the all your so-called religious they were there, and IPOB was proscribed as a terrorist organization. Yes, you all of you were there. Did you say anything? Did you do anything? No. But me, me and Yala is killing. Me and Yala is everywhere killing, raping, murdering people. They are not a terrorist group. But happy you be. Because light is in us and there is darkness in most of you. Darkness. Most of you. And you're afraid of the truth. I will tell you the truth. Look at him, Mali. Reported by New York Times. Ordinary Mali in Bamako, in Mali, on Friday, people came out asking for the president to resign. They've had enough. But in the zoo, can you do it? I want to ask, I want to pose a very simple question to Christians in the zoo. Simple question. What do you think would happen if all of you were to come out tomorrow morning? All the daddy GOs in the zoo called Nigeria were to come out tomorrow morning. And to say, enough is enough. Let everybody go on the streets and protest. The zoo will come to an end. And your life will be better. But they will never do it. They will never, ever do it. Do you know why? Because your daddy G.O. benefits from corruption. Because the, the reason why they get tight from you is because you are poor. Mentally poor. That is why they do that. Our problem is numerous of black people. Do you see Togo? I want to use Togo as an example. Do you see Adari Togo? Togo! Togo on Kete. Adari Togo here. Yeah. <laughs> Togo is a very fine example of the, the depth. I do promise uh, Levinos that I, after today, of course, things will be different from Wednesday onwards. I won't, I will encourage our people, black people all over the world. I will encourage them. Let me do that thing that some of them say I should do. But for tonight, I will say the truth. Look at Togo. Do you know that Togo was once a French, sorry, a German colony? Germany used to own Togo. They used to speak German as their lingua franca. And in 1945, after the war, they used Togo to compensate France. In 1945, they were handed over like a panapana, handed them over like a prostitute, over to, uh, to France. Their lingua franca is now French. Like, hey, black people, black in this UG, black. And I'm telling you, if the world decides tomorrow to hand them over to, to Sweden, they will not be Swedish. Only in Africa. And when you challenge them and say to them, the reason why they can hand you over like a parcel from what is because of the way you reason, they don't understand it. They think you hate them. They think you hate Christianity. I'm telling a black man, the way you reason is flawed. Togo is an example of the hopelessness of a black man. Before it was uh, German. Now it is French. Are we, are we okay at all? Oh dear me. Unbelievable. And if it, oh, wait, 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 we're not the same one. Huh? I'm from South South. I'm from East West and uh, South South South. Despite the fact that it has no meaning. Somebody I was discussing with China Savon and he reminded me of something very important. Those who want to say, oh, I asked somebody, why do you want a, an Igbo nation alone? He said, oh, uh, everybody can ask Igbo. Where they speak Igbo only? So we can be Igbo people, just one. And I asked him, let us count. I asked him to start. He said, nah. Let us count. Let us count. He said, nah. And then he reminded of something. You see one, the, the figure one. In our counting, in for Igbo Biafran so the same one on one is called Nge, it is called Otu, it is called Na, it's called Ofu, the same one. No? So does it mean that all the people that call one Nge or Na, they are not the same people? <laughs> they, are, they, are, they are different. One is from Benin, the other one is from uh, is from uh, uh, Adwekit. Uh, in Ibeku, we say Nge. 
no one can say oh to na na. So does it mean no people are from the maybe they come from from uh, from Jukun? <laughs> Do you see how free some are? That language is not the determining factor as to who you are. For us, if your mother ties to peace rapper, you're one of us. Because culturally, we are affiliated. We have cultural affinity. That's the case with we, we We live in, in a space where, in the zoo, where historians deny us history. I, there was a time that my friend... Femi Fadikayo, they wrote something about... I've, I've been having sleepless nights. I've not told anyone. I've not even told him. He wrote something about um, Yoruba. Not their name, not being Yoruba. But is um, Ududua. It's been on my mind. And I've been researching. You know, we, we read a lot. I've been researching. And I stumbled upon an old Biafran map. And it was very, very... <laughs> I don't know, it was an eye-opener, to be honest with you. And I, I give it to them. Uh, I, I would say that some people know, since Fanaka knows, maybe some other people will know. But I'm sure that most of the thieving pastors you have in you know, the land, they do not know this either. I even read some pieces where some people attacked, attacked um, Fanaka because of it. Said, oh, you don't know what you know, you know, in the zoo, when you're educated in the zoo, you reason backwards. When somebody makes a very serious allegation or advances a hypothesis, your job is to go and investigate before you start allowing your emotions to run wild and crazy. Fanika has said that um, Yoruba doesn't exist. It's, a, it's an insult, it's an insultive word like uh, Nyamri. I know the funniest thing, it is true. I looked at this Biaf this um, African map, old map. Oh. I can see Biafra very clearly on the eastern flank, and very close to the north, oh, uh, the north of Kwa State. You have a Yariba. This is the first time I'm seeing Yoruba on a map, but it's not called Yoruba. It's called Yariba. Y a r r i b a. But Biafra was spelled correctly. Even Bini was spelled correctly with Benin, B E N I N. Zaria was spelled correctly. Kano was spelled correctly. It's only Katsina they called Katsina. Maybe it's the Katsina is the emphasization. Maybe this, this is the correct one. Every name was correct. Dahomey was spelled correctly. Even Abome was spelled correctly. Ivory Coast was spelled. But Yoruba was spelled in Yariba. And very close to the north. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. And that is the first time that I'm saying it. And I did a bit more research and I discovered that it is actually true that the Europeans, according to this very man, they called Johnson, the history of the Yorubas they wrote in 1897, that the Europeans, when they encountered Hausa, no, yeah, Hausa people, they said, they described the Yorubas as Yariba people, people who are untrustworthy. And the Yorubas did not change the name. They retained it. We, changed, we said no to ours. The same way we call them Agogi. You cannot see uh, an Arab person say, oh, I'm a bogey. Or our area is now known as a bogey. No. They gave us Yemeni, we said no. Is that our name? We are Igbo. Or we are Biafra. Call us anything you like. But not Yemeni. They called the Yorubas Yariba. Untrustworthy, unreliable people. And the Yorubas accepted it. Do you know why they accepted it? Because of the disproportionate influence of Yoruba Muslim in the lives of Odudua people. I told you, anything comes from Sokoto Caliphate. Odudua Muslims who swallow it hook, line, and sinker. That's what happened. They lost their name. They're now, they're now answering the names of those who conquered them in the Lorraine. 
And another thing is quite interesting, you know, it's quite um, astonishing, is the, is the predominance of, of Bini Kingdom throughout this era. Predominance of Bini Kingdom. And the Yorubas were actually called, sorry, the Dudubas were called Yariba, and they accepted it. Just like um, Niger Delta, a place of darkness inside darkness. This one, uh, Yariba, meaning dubious people, and they accepted it. And as I told you, your name will always follow you. And what is happening today? <laughs> anyway, that is a story for another day. But um, Yoruba has no meaning. It's a Duduwa, it's your name. I have this map. Please, can you publish it so they can see it? Her name is Yariba. It's a very, very uncomfortable name to bear, to be honest with you. Very sad indeed. Oduduwa children should rise up and from today we refer to them as Oduduwa people, not Yoruba anymore, please. Because Yoruba doesn't exist. It was a, it was a very terrible name given to them by Fulani people, please. Their name is Oduduwa. They are the sons and daughters of Oduduwa. They are not Yariba. Yariba is a derogatory name, please. It is here, and the map is here. Yariba. So Fanny Kayode was right. Y-A-R-R-I-B-A. It's here in the map. Please, can you publish it? That the world may know. It is free lesson that we give them here. We teach you history here for free. For free. The Janjaweeds are preparing to fight us. They are preparing to go to war. Our daughters are being cut into pieces and put everywhere as usual as we'd expect them to be. Their friends in America are sleeping. In the next 2,000 years, when they have no home, they'll start looking for somebody to apologize to them. Now they have a chance to make a headway. They're not taking that opportunity. We must warn them. The defense of Biafra land will be done under one command. Not to, not to all these stupid... The idiots, the criminals are advocating for separate village, village vigilante. That's how foolish they are. They saw that the Duduwa people, they had a motekum under one command. The Fulani terrorists have one command, Mietiana, one command. But do you see, they claim they went to school. They claim they educated. When it comes to us, they want every village they have, if you have two double barriers, if you have a one damn gun, uh, organize yourself, village by village, uh, uh, a vigilante. This is how they, they claim they went to school. That is not what we want. Even the vigilante in the villages that are all IPOB anyway. Everybody is IPOB for information. And we are under one central indisputable command which I lead. One command the whole world over. One command. All that your useless, you know, autonomous rubbish doesn't apply. After we defeat our enemies, we can now go to our tents, O Israel. But for now, under one command, that is how you defeat the enemy. Do you understand it? All of you idiots in Abuja running around with your with your big red, black, and blue, looking for for somebody to to write petition for, so you can get money. Go back to your useless unemployment. And leave the matters of state to those who know it. Statecraft is not meant for gossipers and idle minds. We are on to something very big. Only one command, please. All these people advocating going through town unions. And, are they not the same town unions that gave our land to Mietiala? Not the same people? The same president general and the same uh, uh, traditional ruler? The same people. For your information. We have gone past that era of nonsense. We have decided to move on. And that moving on entails us doing that which is right before God in heaven and man on this very earth. We have come very close to the end of our proceedings today. And for those of you petitioning me and saying that I should be nice to black people, from Wednesday I will be. And let me see if you have changed sufficiently. If you have not changed, I will return to this style of broadcast, if you don't know. But from Wednesday, I will give you a chance. I will praise you, and I will expect you to do that worthy of somebody who is under praise, so to speak. But whatever you are, whatever thing you are worshipping is entirely up to you. Biafra will be a secular state by the foundation.
that you don't see will be anchored on the Ten Commandments of the Most High. Biafra is a godly nation. It is a kingdom of God on the face of this very earth. We cannot deny that. We cannot deny that. And the Ten Commandments will guide us always. Always, always. Without, I said always, without fail. And you see what God is going to do this very year because of it. Do you, but I, I, how do you think we manage to raise money to do other things that we do? When an evil man cannot, you know an evil man cannot give you money, you know that very well. It's not possible. That's where they are. That's where they are. Go to America and do, go and do fundraising. Go and do fundraising in America and see what they will do to you. They have, they have cut us off again on Facebook. The, the gospel is too hot for even Facebook <laughs> to, to take. Too way too hot for Facebook. I thank all of you for listening. Nobody loves you more than we do. I'm being honest with you. And uh, maybe it is about time that we tell all the, the GOs to start paying us at least some of the money we have been spending on championing and campaigning for Christian rights all over the world. Very, very important to do that. I thank you all very much for listening to us this very evening. And as always, Biafra is our religion. When they ask you, what is your religion, you tell them Biafra. Biafra is our religion. Here on radio, Biafra is where we worship. And we worship the only one true living God. The God of Eri. The God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob. The same God that David worshipped. The same God that Jesus Christ worshipped. And might I also add, the same God that even Prophet Muhammad called Allah, indivisible, one God, and under whose command and grace we do all that we do. Let me repeat. Biafra is our religion. Here on radio, Biafra is where we worship. Because Chuku Kika Biama Promi Adonai. El Shaddai, Elohim, is our God. From me, from here, it is 